Now let's look at some questions for class nine math. Okay, so these are Olympiad problems. So obviously slightly more tricky than your usual problems. So here we start with our very first question. Okay, this is this question is pretty simple for those who have understood the basic concepts. We have to find out how many linear equations. Okay, so what is a linear equation? Linear equation of is of the form ax plus by is equal to c. This is an example of a linear equation. It means that all the powers of x and y, they are in power, the maximum power is 1. That is what it means. We have to find the linear equations which are satisfied by x equal to 2 and y equal to minus 3. Okay, so there is one such linear equation I can assume could be x plus y is equal to minus 1. There are others as well. Right? So there are a number of such equations which can be satisfied with these two values. If I plug x2 and y minus 3, indeed this equation becomes true, it is satisfied. Another example could be x minus y is equal to 5. This is another such example. So the idea is, if you go back to your Cartesian plane, I hope you remember this. So if you go back to your Cartesian plane, there is a point here which is x equal to 2 and y equal to minus 3. So y is minus 3, so we come to negative. And x is positive, so we come here. And this is the point 2 comma minus 3. All the equations which could be possibly satisfied by this point would lie or would cross this point. And of course, if we start, sorry, my drawing is not so good. But if we start drawing lines, then we can see that infinitely many lines can pass through this point which means that infinitely many linear equations could be satisfied by this particular point. Very simple, if you go back to basic concepts, as soon as you listen to or you hear the word equations, you should be able to visualize what it would look like in a Cartesian plane. Right? That is where we are coming from. That is what we have to understand. It is not possible to construct a triangle a, B, C, right? So this is our second question for this class, class 9th. It is not possible to construct a triangle A, B, C with B, C equal to 5. So there is one question on triangle which is always asked. So this is asked in all kinds of Olympiads actually. Right? So what we are being told, right? the simplest way to solve this problem, such problems actually, is to just draw diagrams. So I would just choose my B, C to be this. I would put A here. And then what I would also do is I would put angle B is equal to 75 degrees. So I just assume that this is 75 degrees. Now at this point you should try to draw, draw the diagram a little bit uh, to the scale. <laughs> I mean you understand what I am saying right at this point in such questions whether the triangle is possible or not in such questions you should try. So for example if this is an acute angle then draw an acute angle. If this were an obtuse angle I would have drawn an obtuse angle. Right? At least this much accuracy you should try to keep. Right? It is our diagram. We cannot really draw a diagram and say oh not to, not to scale. When we are drawing our diagrams we should try to make them as close to the problem as possible. Of course when the diagrams are given in, in the problem itself then we assume nothing else but what has been given in the problem. Okay, so when, when the diagrams are given in problem, we assume they are not to scale. If a square is given but the problem doesn't say square, we assume it's a rectangle. We don't assume a triangle would be equilateral. All of those examples. But when we are drawing the diagrams, we draw them as close as possible to the real problem as we can. So here we are being told that this BC is 5 cm. Now one thing to understand is that this BA plus AC, right? So this AB plus AC would always have to be greater than 5 cm, 100%, right? Think about it. Even if this A is little bit above, little bit above, then also this AB plus AC becomes bigger than 5 cm. If this AB plus AC is less than or equal to 5, then we don't even have a triangle, right? It would be like a, we'll only be able to reach half A. We won't be able to reach A. Right? We, so, so the correct choice in this problem is 4.5 centimeter. Right? So it's pretty trivial. Once you draw the diagram, you'll be able to visualize it that this AB plus AC can never be less than 5. Right? This, this length has to be greater than 5, 100%. 
Now, this is a percent problem. Percent problems are always asked, okay? And typically, percent problems don't involve uh, trivial numbers, okay? So, if you are having trouble with uh, multiplications and those things, then you can keep these for the last, okay? So, if they, they typically involve bigger multiplications and so, uh, so forth. Here, we are being told the diameter of a sphere. So, let's assume that my original radius of the sphere is 100x. Now, if the diameter is decreased by 25%, it means that the radius would also be decreased by 25%, 100%, right? Because they are linearly related to each other. If one decreases by 25%, the other would also. So, this is my radius. I am just assuming my radius to be 100x. Once it's decreased by 25, it, it means that this would be reduced only to 75x. That's what this means. We are being asked by what percentage its volume decreases. So we are being asked about the volume. So volume is cube. Okay, volume changes as the cube of this radius. Diameter of a sphere. Uh, so volume depends as a cube of the radius. So the volume would change as, so percentage change. We don't have to write the formula for volume at all. We only need to know that it varies as cube. And then we can simply say it would be 100x cube minus 75x cube. So initially it was 100x. The new is this much. So this is the difference between them. So this is the change. And of course, whenever you calculate percentages, you always take the original value. You always calculate percentage change with respect to original value. So I keep original value right at the bottom. One thing to notice here is that this is an x cube. So this common factor of x cube would be there in all terms and it gets cancelled out. If you were to compute this, this would come out to be 57.81. Okay, it's 8125, but we'll just approximate it to be 81. Okay, so again, like, like I said, it's non-trivial, the maths is non-trivial, but again, with sufficient practice, with, with, if you're practicing these problems a lot, then this maths would become fast. You'll automatically increase your speed and you will, more importantly, you would avo avoid the silly mistakes in these maths, which not only cost you marks, they also cost you a cost you lot of time. Okay, so these big calculations, if you are making a silly mistake somewhere, you have spent a lot of time also, right? Not only is not only a question of marks, you could have used the same time in some other problem, which you are now not able to do. Okay, so avoid silly mistakes in general, that's what I would say, but those can also be avoided. This will automatically, naturally be avoided if you are doing a lot of practice. So here, there is a question, it, it tells us, it asks us to find the value of y so there is an angle y okay so this is an angle y we are asked for this foot b so the one thing i do is straight away as soon as i start at this problem look at this problem one thing i am doing is i am turning it i just turn it okay so i rotated this figure like this and this is what i got okay so original figure was slanted it was tilted i just raised it i just and now i complete this triangle this is one way of solving it. There are other ways, believe me, of solving this problem, but this is just one way. We are asked the value of this y. I just assume that this angle is a degree and this angle is b degree. I can assume it. Right? There is no problem there. Now notice that there are two triangles in this problem. One is this triangle m. I will just call this point O. N, okay, this M O N is one triangle and the sum of the angles would be what? 180 degree, we know that. So A plus B plus Y is equal to 180 degrees. We know that, pretty simple. And the other triangle is this bigger one. Okay, so what I'll do is that I'll change the color of my ink so that it becomes very clear. So there is this bigger triangle, okay. L, M, L, and N. So this is the other triangle, the bigger one. L and M, right? This is the other triangle. And in this case, again I write down the sum of the angles. So the first angle is this one, A plus 30. 
plus the second one is 40 right, the top one the angle L and the last one is these two together 20 plus B and this also would be equal to 180 degrees we know that now what I do is in the second one I find out the value of A and B what this value of A plus B would be it would be 180 minus the total of this 30 plus 40 70 80 90 this comes out to be 90 degrees a plus b i substitute in the top problem it's very simple systematically we are approaching it no difficulty at all so this a plus b i substitute here this we know is 90 plus y is 180 degrees and therefore y comes out to be 180 minus 90 which is equal to 90 degrees so that is your answer right? again a very simple problem not not no uh, no hassle no fuss okay you can just systematically solve it this is another problem again this is an algebra problem of algebra you should know the formulas of a cube plus b cube a cube minus b cube you should also know formulas of a plus b the whole cube and a minus b the whole cube all of those should be by heart Okay, otherwise you would not be able to solve many of the algebraic problems that would be asked. Okay, here there is one trivial way to solve this problem. A lot of students would go down that way. They will simply do a a plus b the whole cube, a minus b the whole cube. They'll write the expansion and that's why how they will do it. I'll just suggest right because let's try to solve it in a different way. Okay, I'm not saying one method is better than the other. You whatever you met, you use whatever whatever method suits you the best. I just call this entire thing A and I call this entire thing X minus Y as B. I'm just illustrating another method of solving the same problem. And then one thing I can see is this is A cube minus B cube, which is nothing but A minus B into A square plus AB plus B square. I substitute the values. A minus B is nothing but X plus Y minus X plus Y and then a square plus a b i will write that further a is x plus y the whole square plus x plus y into x minus y which is a plus b into a minus b so that is x square minus y square plus the last term is b square so b square is x minus y the whole square x minus y the whole square okay so this is this is we have done the expansion of these two these two these two things x plus y the whole cube x minus y so this is we have done the expansion of this right here so if you simplify it further you will realize that this indeed becomes very simple so this becomes 2y y plus y is 2y this x and x would cancel very simply and this is a plus b the whole square and a minus b the whole square which is nothing but x square plus y square plus 2xy and this from here we get another x square minus y square plus from here we would get x square plus y square minus 2xy okay and of course this minus 2xy and plus 2xy would again cancel so if you simplify it further what you would get is 2y into x square there are how many x's one and 3 so there will be 3x square plus y square okay so and then rest of those also we will these two also we will write minus 6y into x square minus y square now you can open the bracket okay so I can now simplify it further I can now write okay I'll write it right here okay at the top from here I am starting okay now I can write 2y so this is 2y into 3x square 2y into 3x square so this becomes 6yx square okay so this becomes 6yx square plus this is 2y cube so this is 2y into y square so this becomes 2y cube and then from there I get 6yx square okay so this is from the second term from this one I am getting plus 6y cube so this and this again cancel so your final answer becomes 6 plus 2 8y cube very very simple I used one method you could have used other method but the idea is to expand these terms we have to expand each of these terms one way or another 
pretty simple not very complicated if you ask me but of course as we have been saying approach these problems systematically right very very vital very very important keep patience keep your calm slowly and gradually solve the problems and take it as a challenge enjoy it okay thank you and good luck